So in this video, we just want to survey the different types of eukaryotic organelles that we find inside of eukaryotic cells. Um, let's see if we can discuss first why even have organelles in the first place. So what I did is I, sh I have a, a typical animal eukaryotic cell here and I have a prokaryotic cell that I showed in the last video. Um, I'd like to do a better job of, of talking about the relative size of the cells as well, so I tried to show that here. Prokaryotic cells are much smaller than eukaryotic cells. And as it turns out, having a larger size can be a potential disadvantage because when we talked about how enzyme proteins um, just kind of randomly move around the cell and their the chemical substrates that they interact with, they actually both randomly move around and they have to collide together in order for a chemical reaction to be sped up. Well, if you have a very large cell, then the odds that enzymes and substrates randomly collide together would actually be a, a much lower probability. And so why do uh, larger eukaryotic cells have these special compartments? Well, part of the reason is that they want to put their enzymes and substrates into those compartments so that they don't have as much space to move around, and so they actually do collide more often. So they've kind of figured out a way to be larger in size and yet still have small compartments so that their enzyme reactions are still fast and efficient. The other thing I briefly said about organelles is remember they have their own membrane around them so that they can make their own environment inside different from the cellular cytoplasm environment. And so they might be able to optimize like the pH, for example, um, inside the organelle to make it, it best for the enzymes they have inside. So, so organelles are really just about making sure that enzyme efficiency is still high um, inside of an overall larger cell. So that being said, let's see if we can just talk about some of the organelles. I'm certainly not going to go through all of them, but I just want to kind of broadly talk about these topics. Organelles that are involved in the modification and delivery of proteins. Organelles that are involved with energy uh, production or um, uh, transformation. And then uh, talk briefly about plant and animal cells as a way of, of showing how all cells can be different. So uh, protein production, we've kind of uh, been through this story before. We said that the DNA is the master code for proteins, that RNA will make a copy of the master code DNA, and that the ribosome, a structure I introduced last video, these little dots right here, will actually read the RNA code um, that comes out of the nucleus, as it turns out. So the RNA might come out, and then the ribosomes read that and actually initially build the protein. Well, as it turns out in eukaryotic cells, um, uh, since the cell is more complicated as a whole, there might be other organelles that kind of do additional things to the protein after the ribosome builds it. So uh, one of those structures might be what's called the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is really um, this whole um, series of folded membranes very close to the nucleus because it gets to modify the protein next. Um, and for our purposes, once the ribosome builds it, uh, the ribosome deposits the protein just right into those network of folds, and, and the protein just might get modified in some kind of way. Maybe amino acids get cut off, maybe amino acids get added. And then let's talk about the second organelle. The second organelle that, that finishes the process is going to be a little bit further away from the nucleus because it finishes the process. That's the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. And basically the Golgi apparatus is going to receive the protein after the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, and it's going to finish the modification of the protein by maybe altering other amino acids, adding other things to the protein. And then it's going to have the job of shipping it to where it needs to go. Remember, this is a larger and more complex cell, so there might be proteins that need to be tagged to, to travel to a specific place. Uh, so the Golgi needs to be there to make sure that proteins not only get built, but get to the right place. Uh, sometimes uh, students uh, like the, the device that, you know, G-O-L-G-I is five letters, and that's kind of like a five-number zip code. So that kind of reminds you that maybe the Golgi body is a little bit like a post office, sorting through proteins and shipping them to the right place. So let's switch now to our energy organelles, um, organelles that are involved in energy transformations. Here's the chloroplast uh, inside of a typical plant cell. Um, I tried to show you another picture of a chloroplast to kind of emphasize that, that it kind of looks inside like there are little stacks of disks inside. Um, as it turns out, the chloroplast is doing photosynthesis that we learned about in the previous unit. Uh, plants, being autotrophs, certainly do photosynthesis. I do want to emphasize that there are prokaryotic bacteria, some prokaryotes that do photosynthesis as well. They just don't have specialized chloroplast organelles to do it. 
Uh, on the other side, there's the mitochondrion. Mitochondria is just plural form. Um, and that looks like this guy right here, kind of a very characteristic, highly folded inner membrane that almost looks like a little snake inside. That's your mitochondrion, and it is going to do cellular respiration. So part of the reason I'm trying to show you a plant cell doing this is I'm trying to remind you that plants do respiration as well as photosynthesis. They have both chloroplasts and mitochondria. Please don't tell me that just animals do respiration, so only animals have mitochondria. That's wrong. Um, so let's go ahead and since we're talking about plants and animals, let's go ahead and talk about the differences between them. Um, there are some structures that animals have that plant cells do not, but I'm mostly just going to focus on the other way around. Structures that plant cells have that animal cells do not. Um, so that would be the chloroplast for one. So certainly animals do not do photosynthesis since we're heterotrophs. Um, second, uh, kind of a more minor difference is that, that both of us have what are called vacuoles, which I haven't talked about yet. Vacuoles just store um, additional material. Um, often plant cells have a very large, what's sometimes called a central vacuole, this giant structure here because it often holds lots of water in it. Um, animal cells have vacuoles. Maybe this is intended to be a vacuole up here, uh, but typically they have smaller, more numerous vacuoles. Not a huge difference to me. And then plants, um, unlike animal cells, have a cell wall. As it turns out, most organisms have cell walls. Fungi have cell walls. Uh, many protists do, all bacteria do, and all plants do. Um, so, so we're kind of the exception there. Um, but as I tried to emphasize in the last video, everybody has to have a cell membrane. So maybe this is the cell membrane in yellow here. The, the membrane is typically inside of the wall. Not a big deal to me. So maybe this, this big green then is the uh, cell wall of the plant. Um, and what makes them different? Again, a membrane controls what comes in and out. Have to have that. And the wall is just there for then for strength and structural support, holding the cell together. As it turns out, animals kind of need that function too, but they might accomplish that in different ways. Okay, um, and then the final thing I want to say is since we're kind of talking about the difference between plant cells and animal cells, the other thing I just want to get across is um, we're kind of showing you what we find in a lot of different eukaryotic cells, but, but different cells are unique, and cells can specialize themselves for their overall job by um, changing their shape, by having more of certain organelles, by having fewer of certain organelles. So I don't want you walking away from this video thinking every single cell inside your body looks like that, that kind of semi-spherical uh, blob that I just showed you, because they don't. Um, just you know, two examples to show that. Um, here is a neuron, kind of a cartoon of a typical neuron maybe found in your body, sending electrical signals. Definitely a very different shape than that spherical blob. Uh, maybe a red blood cell, which is kind of uh, depicted here, looks a little bit more like a spherical blob, kind of. Um, but what's really interesting about a red blood cell is that it loses most of its organelles. Um, it, it has them at birth, but it kind of matures and actually kicks out its nucleus and DNA, surprisingly, and gets rid of a lot of its other organelles, too. Um, its job is just to be kind of a, a, a deliverer of oxygen to other cells around the body. Um, and it doesn't live very long, so your cell kind of, uh, so your body body compensates for that by kind of producing them constantly. So just different cells do different things and so they might um, specialize themselves beyond the conversation we had. So um, we try to talk about average eukaryotic cells. We try to talk about the purpose of organelles um, in general and then we kind of focused on protein modifying and shipping organelles and then we talked about the energy organelles.